ultimately, if you're going to have lasting change in anything, you're really talking about just raising your standards. I mean, I always tell people, if you want to know how to change your life, I give it to you in three words, boring as it sounds, raise your standards. Now, what does that mean? Corny as it sounds, raise your standards. Well, thank you for the breakthrough thought, Tony. I'm glad I wasted my time watching this little email with you. But think about it. Lasting change is different than a goal. You don't always get your goals, but you always get your standards. Maybe it would help you is to think about it this way. I, I try to explain standards to people with a different set of words. Think of it as everybody in life gets their musts. They don't get their shoulds. Like, think about it. Most people have a list of shoulds, don't they? Don't you have a list of the shoulds, things you should do, you should follow through on? I, I should lose some weight, I should work out more, I should make more calls, I should respond more rapidly to my email, whatever. You know, I should get into the office earlier. I should be, you know, more confident. Whatever your should list is, people love to have their should list be met, but it's kind of like New Year's resolutions. If it does, it's really exciting, but if it doesn't, which is most of the time, eh, it's a little disappointing, but you kind of know it's not gonna happen. But when you decide something is a must for you, an absolute must, when you cut off any possible, you say, I'm gonna find the way, or I'm gonna make the way. Human beings, when they resolve things, when they make a real resolution inside themselves, which is they raise the standard and they make it a must, they find the way. Think about it in your own life. Haven't you had some area of your life where you raise your standard and your life has never been the same? Maybe at one time in your life you smoked cigarettes or you did something and you did it for years and you kept trying to change it, trying to change it and kept telling yourself I should. And then one day something happened. Something just clicked you over. Something took you over that kind of tipping point. And inside yourself, you said, no more. And it was a very, very different experience, wasn't it? Something inside of you shifted. And what was a should became a must, and you've never gone back. Is there an area like that in your life you can think of? Again, did you ever smoke cigarettes? Did you ever eat a certain way, drink a certain form of alcohol, and then finally say, no more, and you just don't go back? And notice this, it doesn't really take any willpower anymore. Because somewhere when we make this click, when we make something a must, we attach ourselves to it it becomes part of our identity. And one thing I've learned in the last, gosh, 33 years of working with people from now over 100 countries, 4 million people, is human beings absolutely follow through on who they believe they are. If you say, said to me, well, I'm really gonna work hard to stop smoking, but you know, I've been a smoker my whole life, and I'm, you know, I am a smoker. I know your days are numbered, you're gonna be back smoking cigarettes again because we all act consistent with who we believe we are. I tell people the strongest force in the whole human personality is this need to stay consistent with how we define ourselves. If you define yourself as somebody who is really conservative, you're not gonna be crazy and act nuts unless you're really drunk or something and then you can say it's the alcohol when it's really just you finally getting permission to be yourself, the alcohol is your excuse. If you're a really crazy person, you act crazy, outrageous, playful. You don't act conservative because that's not who you are. Very often people say, well, I can't do that. I'm not that kind of person. And I always say to people, really, when did you define yourself? I mean, really, how many years ago did you come up with what you could and couldn't do in your life? How many years ago? Most people, if they really look at how they're living their life today, it's based on a set of standards, a set of beliefs, that they made choices about 10, 20, 30, or more years ago. I mean, very often we made decisions in our youth, or very young, about what to believe, about what we were capable of, about who we are as a person, and that becomes the glass ceiling, if you will, that controls us. There's a, a corny metaphor, but it's true. I remember one time I was with my family at the circus, and there was a person there, and they had this big, giant elephant, and you look at this elephant, and they take this little rope, put it around the elephant's neck, and they drive this stake into the ground, and I mean, you look at this and you know that elephant could rip down the entire tent with almost no effort. And yet, the elephant doesn't struggle, doesn't try. Why? Because the elephant's conditioned. And they take that elephant and condition the elephant when it's a baby elephant. That's how they train him. When it's a little baby elephant and it doesn't have the power yet, they put a big rope around it and they drive this huge stake in the ground and the elephant fights and fights and fights. And one day, finally, that elephant decides, I'm not capable of pulling this out. And once that becomes the definition of an identity of anyone, an elephant in this case, they don't even try anymore. It's just who I am, that's how it is, that's just the way it is in my life. I'd like to ask you to take a look at any place you've got a limitation and ask yourself, when did I decide to accept that limitation? And you may not even see it as a limitation, you might see it as just that's who I am. But 
so often in our lives we've adapted to be a certain way so that we don't fail or so that people will like us or respect us, but it's not necessarily who we are. Joy comes when you're spontaneous. It's really hard to be truly happy when you're not being yourself. And most of us have no clue who we are. And so a big part of my work, if you've ever been to an event, you know, is to get people to do things spontaneously without thinking, because that's when the real you shows up. That's when the energy comes alive. And when you do that, when you start to connect to your true nature, suddenly there's energy available for you to set a higher standard for what you want in your life. That's what this is really all about. And when I talk about standards, when I talk about, you know, shoulds versus musts, think about your own life. I know there have been areas in your life where some point in time you just shifted and you raised the standard and your life changed. Because whatever people have their identity attached to, they live. We live who we believe we are. That's just how it works. It's just kind of like, I'll give you an example. Look at your physical body. Your physical body today is an absolute reflection of only one thing. Not your goals, not your desires, but your standards the identity you have for yourself. If your standard is you're an athlete, then there's a certain amount of strength, a muscle tone, and energy that's available in your body on a regular basis because that's who you are. And so you do whatever's necessary to maintain that identity. Again, the strongest force in the human personality is this need to stay consistent with how we define ourselves. Because if you don't know who you are, you wouldn't know how to act. Once you lock in on that identity, your brain finds a way to keep you there. If you say, uh, you know, man, I've, I'm overweight, I've always been overweight, I'm big boned, and that's the story you've got, then you're gonna always find a way to get back there. That's your settling point. That's your identity. That's where things lock in. If you see somebody who's in really great shape, you ask them, do you work out? You know the answer, yes, how often? And they'll tell you three times, four times, five times a week, whatever. In a seminar, I'll ask people, who here works out at least five days a week? And I'm stand up. And you look around that room, and you know that they work out five times a week because you can see their body. You don't just get a result without some kind of action, without some form of ritual. Ritual meaning actions you do consistently. Now, do you think of those people that are out there working out five days a week, do they have more time than you do? Or I have, or anybody else? Of course not. Is their life less busy? Of course not. It's just a must for them. They must work out that way, and they've made that turn, and their life's changed. So I'm not saying you have to work out five days a week. I'm just saying whatever you really want, wants don't get met consistently. Standards do. Whatever you identify, this is who I am. And so it's not so much about changing your identity as there's expanding it. You know, deciding that, you know, instead of your goal is to lose 10 pounds, which is not compelling, what if your vision was to get back to my fighting weight? You know, this, this year, this month, this next 90 days, I'm gonna transform my body. I'm gonna take on a new challenge. I'm gonna find some technique or strategy, there's a million of them, that can reframe myself where I wanna feel younger, stronger, more vibrant than ever before. Here's my reasons, because I want the energy to really make my life work. Because it's tough out there and I wanna be stronger than I've ever been before. I wanna go in front of the mirror and if I'm naked, not you know, wanna laugh. I wanna look there and take a good look and go, yeah, <laughs> I'm proud of whatever I see there. Whatever it takes, something's gonna make you laugh, smile, something's gonna tease yourself, but something's gonna move you to another level. If you identify yourself in a new way and you own that every day, and that becomes the standard of how you live, you'll find the way to make that standard real. Money's the same way. Think about it, it doesn't matter what's happening, quote unquote, in the marketplace. People that make money find a way to make money no matter what, don't they? I mean, most people's standard is to pay their bills. So that's what most people find a way to do, even when economic times get tough. Most people, if that's their absolute standard, they find a way. Some people's standard is pay their bills most of the time. And so most of the time they do. Some people's standard is not just to pay their bills, but to take care of their family and maybe even some of their friends. And they find a way. In fact, you know, some people may be in a family where they don't have enough money. They barely have money to pay their bills. They work their guts out. And then somebody, their mother, their father, somebody else, their sister gets ill and there's not enough money to take care of it. Nobody else has money in the family. They don't either, but they find a way to get that money to take care of their mother or father, don't they? And pay their bills. They never could do it before. Why? The situation made them raise their own standard. And not everybody does that. Somebody else in the family might have money and still not take care of their mother. It all comes down to the inner game, my friends. Changing your life is a change in the inner game. The outside world you can't control, but you have absolute control over this one if you learn the dynamics of what shapes you. 
And identity is one of those simple, clear, fundamental basics that if you start, start to shift it, everything else will shift in your life as well. Some people, by the way, have to have more than enough money to do what they want, when they want, where they want, with whomever they want, contribute the way they want. And if that's their must, they find a way. I know that sounds overly simplistic, but it's true. You know, somebody once said, you can take all the money in the world out of the hands of everybody, out of all the wealthy people in the world who are really successful, give it to other people. It wouldn't take too long. Those people would have it back in their hands. It's not because they're manipulative. It's because they have a standard. Some are manipulative. Don't get me wrong. But they've got a standard of what they're going to find a way to make happen. I'm just simply saying to you, take those three magic words and live them. Raise your standard.